Hello and welcome to JHEP's lesson on hydrocarbons suitable for OCR and AQA. So we might have recalled back in GCSC that this is the lovely crude oil. It is a very important substance that we have in our lives. We wouldn't be driving on roads, we wouldn't have aeroplanes or cars even drive on the roads if it weren't for this fantastic thing which is a mixture of lots and lots of hydrocarbons. These are the skeletal formulas of the hydrocarbons over here. I couldn't be bothered to draw the displayed formula mainly because that will take too much work. So here we go. As you can see, we've got lots and lots of different lengths here. We've got short ones, we've got long ones. So it's not in a whole big chain where we just crack it up. But that's a different process, so we're going to talk about that in the next video. So what is a hydrocarbon? A hydrocarbon is a molecule that only contains hydrogen and carbon atoms and that's very important especially for OCR when they when they ask you to, to define it a lot. This is not a hydrocarbon, why? Because although it has carbon and hydrogen atoms, it has got this oxygen atom over here. So in fact this is an alcohol with a hydroxyl group at the end. So we know that we've got all these different mixtures of hydrocarbons over here, how do we separate them? Well, the good thing about that is that each of these has a different boiling point. So the length of it affects the boiling point it has. So say for example, this and this over here will have the same boiling point, but this one and that one would have different boiling points. So we have a very, very interesting equipment that we use, and you probably would have recalled that back at GCSC. This is a fractioning column, and what we do, we put the crude oil in over here, so it comes here, like that, and in this fraction column, at the bottom, it's very hot in there. Say, for example, 350 to 400 degrees. It's very hot in there, and because each, each hydrocarbon has a different boiling point, has different boiling points, as soon as it turns into a liquid, it would get tapped off at various intersections. So it's a bit like a motorway, isn't it? So, say for example, we've got this hydrocarbon over here, this one over here, let's say for example, this boiling point is 320 degrees Celsius, or Kelvin, can't be in Kelvin anyway. What happens? is it will get, as soon as it turns into a liquid, it will get tapped off and all the way into here and we will use it for fuel, oil, for ships and power stations. Again, this is in uh, degrees Celsius, not in Kelvin, so excuse what I said before. And this one over here, this one over here, let's say that the boiling point is 10 degrees. Because the temperature over here is still very, very hot, it will continue to rise, right, due to its volatility. It would continue to rise, just like heat does, as smoke does, until it gets to the point, to get to the temperature in which it would turn into a liquid. So say, for example, this was 5 degrees. It's unrealistic, but over here would be 10 degrees. That molecule over here, which is propane, would get into there for cars basically. So alkanes, this is how we name alkanes. We've got prefixes that we put before the letters A and E. So say for example uh, if we had two carbon atoms we would name the alkane ethane or say for example if we had four carbon atoms we will have butane. Ane symbolizes that it is an alkane. So A and E, we only use it if it's an alkane. And an alkane as well is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. That means we do not have double bonds. If you do biology, if you do biology, you would find out, you'd actually notice that saturated means it has no double bonds, unsaturated means it has double bonds. So let's try and name this molecule over here. This has got one, two, three, four carbon atoms and it is an alkane, so therefore it would need to be butane. This one over here has three carbon atoms, so we look at the table over here and we notice that it is prop 
alkane. If it's an alkene, which we we'll learn later on, it will be propene. But it's an alkane, so it's a propane. This one over here has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And although I haven't actually wrote, written it over here, it will actually be called decane. Okay, because the prefix for 10 is dec. You do need to learn this, so I will get ahead and crack on revising it. So, what is the molecular formula for butane over here? It's got one, two, three, four carbon atoms, and if we count them, if we count the hydrogen atoms, we can see that it's got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it will be C4H10. For propane, it will be three carbon atoms and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogen atoms. And for decane, it would be ten carbon atoms. I counted it before. But how do we know how many carbon how many hydrogen atoms there are, especially in the skeletal formula? What we have is a special tool that will help us, and it's the general formula of alkanes. And if you have noticed, because you are a genius and such, the general, the general formula is that we would have double the amount of carbon atoms plus two. So say for example, carbon four, we've got four carbons here. We've got double the amount of carbons of hydrogen plus two. So the general formula would be CnH2n plus two, okay? So for whatever number we get for carbon, we have to multiply it by 2 and add 2 to get it on. So let's put this into practice. So we've got 10 carbon atoms, so we replace N with 10. So it will be 10 carbon atoms. The amount of hydrogen atoms will be 10 times 2, which is 20, plus 2, which is 22. For alkenes, it's a bit different. So you need to remember the differences between the alkane general formula and the alkene general formula. What we have over here, this little symbol over here, which I should have drawn a bit better. Let's see if we've got, let's, yeah, here we go. Let's try this. Yeah, that's much better. What we've got over here is called a cycloalkane. And the general formula for a cycloalkane is a bit different. Okay, it's actually the same for alkenes, which is CnH2n. In the next video, I'll show you why that is, but Generally, just, just a little overview, each one has got two carbon atoms. So if this is 6, which is uh, cyclohexane by the way, the only difference is that we have cyclo before hexane, okay, because it is a cycloalkane. We've got two hydrogen atoms for every carbon atom, so if you count them all up, it makes 12. So we have six carbon atoms and 12 hydrogen atoms. So, moving on. The good thing about alkanes is that even though sometimes, most of the time, it comes out linear, it comes out looking like this, sometimes it can actually branch off. Sometimes, sometimes it can actually stick on one part of it, okay? It can divert. So it's a bit like this. We've got this methyl group attached to this one, two, three, four, five pentane. Okay, it's a bit different the way that we would write it. We would write it as two meth methyl pentane. Okay. This is 2-methylpentane due to the position of the methyl group. The methyl group is not on number 1, because that's the first carbon. And you could say that it is under position number 1, 2, 3, 4. But, with chemistry and with uh, naming molecules, we like to keep the numbers as small as possible. So we have 2-methylpentane. And over here, this one would be 1, 2, 3-methylpentane. This is called a position isomer. If you've noticed, we've got the same molecule, but the position of the methyl group has changed. It's actually shifted a bit to the third one. And this, for the AQA term, by the way, is a 
uh, position isomer. So, what we both need to all remember, uh, OCR and AQA, is the definition of a structural isomer. And a structural isomer are molecules with the same molecular formula, but with different spatial arrangement. Okay, it might sound a bit of gobbledygook, to be honest, but say, for example, we've got an isomer of C9H20. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's one of them. This is also the same as this because it's got nine carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's got nine carbon atoms. And if I drew out the hydrogens, which I'm not going to because that's going to take far too long, we have got 20 hydrogen. I'll draw, what the hell? Okay, so including the three hydrogen over here, which I can't really fit in because of my board, we have got 20 hydrogen atoms here. And as you can see, that is definitely an isomer of that. And we will call it 2,5-dimethylheptane. And I'll explain that in a second whilst I get rid of the hydrogen atoms. So... We can see that the methyl group, the CH3 group, is on position number 1, 2, and 3, 4, 5. So we would call it 2, 5, and because there are two methyl groups, we would have to write dimethyl. If there were three, it would be trimethyl. So it'd be, it's 2, 5, dimethyl, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's got 7. So if we have a look at our table here, it is hept, and it's an alkane, so ane. And over here, we have got this fantastic molecule here, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we know it's hexane, but it's a branched isomer of hexane. So we have to look at the positions of it. So as you can see, we've got a methyl group on position number 2, on carbon number 2, and an ethyl group, so we've got two carbons here, one over here and the other one over here, so it's an ethyl group on position number five. So we would call it 2-methyl-5-ethyl hexane, 2-methyl-5-ethyl hexane, or alternatively, you can write it as 2-ethyl-5-methyl hexane. And this is also a chained isomer, a chain isomer, because we we are moving the chains about, and we are also, yeah, we just we're moving the chains about. If you want the real definition, a chained isomer is an isomer in which its chains had been repositioned to a new place in the carbon structure. So. This is the OCR thing, so if you're AQA, thank you very much for listening. So, alkane boiling points. If you've noticed, when I said in the fractional column thing over here, we've got the long chain hydrocarbons, and I said that the boiling point of it was 320, and I said that the shorter ones was 10 degrees Celsius. Why is that? Because the longer the carbon chain, the more points of contact that it has between other molecules so there are more points in which it can dock to another molecule it can attach to another molecule like Vel velcro and cotton so as you can see here we've got three parts in which we can connect to another molecule and over here we've got one two three four five parts we can connect to another molecule that means we have got more van der waals forces over here Meaning it's going to take more energy to separate them and therefore that boiling point is going to be much higher than this boiling point over here. And especially for branched isomers as well, even though you would think that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this will have the same boiling point as that, this has got less points of contact because this carbon group over here is a bit of a let's say well it can be under it and also 
there's not many of these branch isomers that we can actually attach it to. So sometimes this branch isomer might just be able to attach to a butane. Or, if it's really lucky, it can attach to a 3-methyl, 1-2-3-4 butane. But most of the times it will attach to butane, and therefore, seeing as this has got more points of contact, seeing as this has got more points in which it can actually attach to other pentane molecules, this has a lower boiling point. This has got less van der Waals forces acting upon the molecules, and therefore, it's got a lower boiling point. And as you can see over here in OCR, they will ask you to interpret and predict uh, when the next, um, the boiling points of it. So say for example, they'll ask you to draw a sketch. So you just sketch it, they might ask you to plot graphs, so you just do that. That's all about exam technique, which will be in my other video. And that is it for our canes.